Hi, it's Story with Tate in the studio. Welcome back to another episode. And in today's video, I will be building a ash dining table with a wedge style top. Now this table measures in at eight feet long by 44 inches wide. And essentially the tabletop is on a wedge style. So the center of the table is about two and a half inches thick and then it will taper down to about an inch and a quarter on the outside. So now there's a lot of different operations I need to do in order to get it like this. But my first step is just taking the boards over to the jointer and I start with doing the face. And uh, I'm just flattening that out and then I move on to the edge and I uh, square up the edge so that when I do glue those boards together, they'll be nice and flat. So I've just finished jointing all the boards. Now they did, they're six quarters, so they started off at about an inch and a half. Now, when I've milled them down, some of them have actually retained their thickness quite well, and some of them they've gotten quite thin. Now, because the table is a wedge shape, I'm going to try to concentrate the thicker boards in the center and then as I glue these together, laminate them together, I'll have sort of thinner boards. So like say this, these two thick boards here will be in the center and then maybe like this one and this one or something, they'll be more in the middle. And then on the end, I can keep those thinner ones there. I'll have to sort of, a, you know, work to see what the boards look like. Um, I want to try to keep as much grain continuity and color matching as possible. Ash does have quite a, very, quite a bit of variation between light colored and then some of the darker hardwood. Now, um, another thing I have to be conscious of is when I do glue them together, some of them have some uh, marks in them. Say for example, you can see that there's some gouging out of the corner. Now, it will be on the under the side of the table, and if it does come through, when I put it on the CNC to flatten the other underside, which is more or less uh, an angle on the other underside, I will have to be conscious about um, sort of where that ends up. But I also do, <laughs> I, <laughs> when the boards are glued together, I want to try to make it so that the grain alternates with itself when I'm laminating them so that the rings will be going this way and then that way. Now the reason I'm doing that is that in case they cup or warp, I want it, the two boards to be working in opposition to one another so that rather if I glue them the same way, the board might end up doing a giant banana on it or a cup or twist or whatever. So these are all things I need to be conscious of of my glue up but first I'm going to mill all the lumber and uh, we'll see where it goes. I'm just running the boards through the planer here now normally when I do run them through I'll run one board and then the next board and the next so they are all the same thickness but for this one I can just run them through individually and just remove as much of the unevenness as possible and just get them as flat as I can. And after I've done that, I square them up on the other edge on the table saw. So what I do is just apply the glue to a face of it and then I attach the other one and I'm just putting them all together in the clamps here and just doing one giant glue up rather than them individually. So it just reduces the amount of clamps I use now. <laughs> I know you can probably do the joke of the woodworker doesn't have enough clamps, but I used quite a few clamps on this one. But uh, yeah, after the glue up was done, it was uh, good. Now I did have to take them back over to the jointer and I just cleaned up the one edge because there was a little bit of glue squeeze out and uh, those boards weren't perfectly flat, but it was just a few passes just to kind of clean it up. And then I used a planer and just took off the other edge so that they were nice, even boards. Now, after I did that, I just um, ended up just taking them over to the domino and uh, I just uh, did a domino on each end. Now, the reason I do that is so that 
when those uh, boards do glow up, blue up, they're nice and flat. Because um, what happens is when those two boards are edge to edge and you try to glue it, they and the clamps are starting to tighten them, they have a tendency to sort of slip up or down so you don't retain that flat surface. Now, you probably might be wondering, why did you glue up the entire tabletop if you gotta create the wedge on the bottom? So, I have to sort of find the center of the table in the thickest point. So I've just cut off the edge, and here you can see I'm just basically placing where that wedge will be. And I just mark the one side, I have to find the thinnest edge and then mark it on the other and just draw it. So you can essentially see how it is. And here I am, now that I found that center, I can cut it down the center. And now that I've cut that center, I can bring it to the CNC. Now you can briefly see the one edge of the CNC is raised uh, just by my buddy there, Zach. And what that does is it lifts up the one edge, you raise it maybe about an inch, and so as that CNC goes back and forth, it'll start to flatten it. Now after that CNC is done, you can see here, just as I'm putting the uh, dominoes in, you can sort of see those two pieces on top of one another, and they've got that wedge shape. So after I've done that, I can go back to glue the tabletop back together. And um, I have to uh, actually glue it with the bottom side down, just so that those clamps have a flat surface to reference off of and I used quite a few clamps here um, with those boards being so wide you have to really uh, make sure that it's a nice and flat even uh, glue up so after the glue up I'm just moving on to the sanding process and uh, just working my way through the grit so I start off at uh, 60 grit and then work my way up to 120 grit on the underside and on the top side I go to 180 after I've done that, I just take off the rough edge and just running the router just over the edge to just give a nice smooth 1 8 round over edge. I find it works really nice on modern furniture. So after that top is done, I'm finally moving on to the feet here or the legs. So the process is very pretty much the same as the tabletop. It's just get those uh, pieces together and glue them together and uh, once they're glued together I uh, put them through the jointer planer again and uh, I just put the uh, dominoes in there. Now once those dominoes are all done I just bang them in and glue them up and it's uh, ready to go and I sand it and flatten it out. Now I gotta figure out how to attach the legs to the underside. Now normally if it's a flat bottom it's pretty straightforward, but with this being that wedge, I need to have either the legs follow this sort of angle, this wedge on the bottom, or I remove material out of this and then groove it. Now, I'm leaning towards making the legs just follow that contour on the bottom. Uh, I think that's going to be the easiest and most amount of adjustability. Trying to build this perfectly flat and then groove it out, I think is going to be difficult. If I had a CNC machine or took the tabletop back to the CNC, I could do that, but I don't really want to lose half of a day going back and forth. And I know the place I normally go to is right around Christmas time and he's extremely busy, so I have a feeling that I won't, he won't be able to do it anytime soon and I want to get this table done for uh, my customers. So like I said, I think I'm just going to follow that groove, I can put it in. And then when I finally screw the legs in, I'll just have to kind of, I can move the leg back and forth just a little bit, just that little bit, I'll kind of adjust that angle so I can get it uh, nice and flat. So yeah, I think that's uh, my best uh, approach. So I'll go ahead and I'll cut this board in half and then I'll end up following the template and then I'll cut it on the bandsaw. And then uh, when I finally do the legs, I can do the rough cutting of the legs and then I'll just use a pattern bit, a uh, router pattern bit to get that perfect uh, angle. To follow that uh, line I just take that piece of MDF board and I just hold it up against the edge of the table and I just take a pencil and I just scribe that line so I can get that perfect angle on it. 
and I just bring it over to the bandsaw and I'm making sure to take my time cutting it so that it follows that contour really well. If it's off by a little bit, it's not a big deal because it's the underside of the table and you won't see it. But um, I am very cautious about that. Now I'm starting the initial cut with my track saw just to take that angle out. And I'm just putting, just cutting it out. Now the center, um, there is a bit of a gap just because with a circular blade, I can't get all the way through. Now I could have used a jigsaw, but the jigsaw I have is a really poor quality one. So I ended up just doing it that way. And then I took the template back and attached to the top of those legs. And then I used a router with a flush trim bit just to get it nice and even. Now I lost that footage, so you can't see it. But once that's all said and done, I'm just using the domino to attach the stretcher to the vertical legs. And uh, I've just put those slots in. You can see how it uh, goes in there. And after I've done that, before I assemble it, what I like to do is to do the sanding on those because I find it's sometimes difficult to get into the corners where the, say, the stretcher and the vertical leg pieces meet. So I just sand it completely so it's nice and easy. Then I can always just touch it up later. But after I've done that, run the router again, 1 8 round over. And here you can see me just applying the glue to the stretcher, to those tenons, and I'm just getting the clamps together and uh, just sort of screwing it. I don't have quite long enough clamps, but after I've done that, I do all the measurements to make sure everything's nice and square. But once that's all done, just doing the finishing process, finally the last part that's sort of the most rewarding. I've done the legs. I put two coats on the legs and two coats on the top side, but I just do the edge first. I have this large polisher slash finish applier <laughs> or finisher and it just makes really quick work of spreading that uh, finish out. Now I use the Osmo raw finish and it's got a matte sheen so it uh, gives it a nice natural appearance without it being too glossy and uh, I just do it nice and even and once I do that I like to wipe it down with a blue shop towel and just remove the excess. That pretty much wraps up the build portion of this video. Now the customers were super happy how the ash complemented their white oak flooring and it looks great in their space. But thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.